All right, so I'm going to review really quick and then I'll introduce um, this new kind of idea that we're going to talk about with Punnett squares. After this, we're going to next week move on to um, evolution. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview. These are the topics we would have covered if we were in school. Um, obviously, we aren't doing as much with them, but you guys are still getting a good overview of them. So in the past couple weeks, we've talked about genes and how some genes can be dominant and some are recessive. So dominant, we symbolize with a capital letter and recessive, we symbolize with a lowercase letter. We said normally, you know, if we have two genes, one from mom, one from dad, and there's a dominant and a recessive, the dominant one's going to overpower the recessive one. So for example, if this is for brown hair, and little a is for blonde hair. The brown hair one would overpower the blonde one, so the person would end up having brown hair. Now we use Punnett squares to figure out what's the probability that two parents will have a kid with a certain trait. So we can say, what if the mom is big A, big A, and what if the dad is Big A, little A, what are the chances that their kid is going to have brown hair or blonde hair, right? And we put one parent across the top and we put one parent across the side and then we fill in the box to see the percentages, right? So in this case, we see that there are two squares with big A, big A and two squares with big A, little A. Because all of them have a big A, all of the kids are going to have brown hair because even at the bottom here, the big A and little A, the big A overpowers the little A. So in this case, four out of four kids, 100% of their children would have brown hair. Okay, so that's what we use Punnett squares for. Now, we're going to look today at traits that don't necessarily follow this rule. Okay, so let's think about some traits here. If I have a really tall person that marries a really short person, okay? If we think about this normally, like let's say we have a big A represents tall and a little A represents short. How tall do you think my kids are, those kids are going to be? So we think about it. A lot of times, you know, what we've been talking about is that the kids would either have to be really tall, as tall as this guy, or really short. But typically, this isn't what happens. Usually, they're going to be somewhere in between mom and dad, right? They're going to be a mix of mom and dad. Think about hair texture. If somebody with straight hair, here's my terrible person, marries somebody with curly hair, what kind of hair is their kid going to have? They might have straight hair, they might have curly hair, but sometimes they might have wavy hair or a little of both, okay? Um, voice pitch, right? Somebody with a really high voice and somebody with a really low voice. What type of voice are their kids going to have? Probably something in between. So all of these things end up blending. They kind of end up being in between traits. And that's what we're going to talk about today. This is something called incomplete dominance, okay? This is when one gene is not completely dominant over another gene. So as a result, the genes blend together. We get something that's in between both of those genes. The example they oftentimes use is with flowers. There's a specific type of flower called a snapdragon that we see this with, okay? So with these flowers, if we get a red flower, Oops, sorry about that. So we have a red flower here. We symbolize it with RR, okay? And we have a white flower. If we cross a red flower and a white flower, we don't get a red flower or a white flower. That's what we would normally expect. We end up getting a pink flower. So they mix together, they blend together. Now take a look at how I um, use letters here. So notice the red is symbolized with an R and the white is symbolized with a W. So here's what scientists do in order to uh, tell that it's an incomplete dominant trait. Instead of using big R and little r, they use two different letters. And the reason they use two different letters is just to remind themselves that this is a trait that blends, 
okay? So you'll see over here we have an R and a W. Which one wins? Well, neither one wins because remember they mix together. So when we have a capital and a lowercase, right, one of the genes wins, one of them is dominant, but we remind ourselves by using two different letters that neither one wins and that they blend together. Let's do an example. Red flowers are dominant to white. The gene for flower color is incompletely dominant, meaning it blends. Cross a pink flower with a white flower. So again, we need to do a Punnett square. So we're trying to figure out what percentage are going to be pink, white, and red. Okay, so it says our one parent's pink. So put that either on the side or on the top. Remember, it doesn't matter if you put that down the side or on the top, it'll still work out. White flower I'm gonna put on the top. If you put it on the side, that's okay. And then we're gonna fill in our square. So here we have RW, RW, WW, and WW. So notice, if we have WW, it's white. Okay, so how many whites do we have? Two white flowers and two out of the four squares, two out of four is what percentage? 50%. And then we have pink, right? RW is pink. And so that's two out of four. So that'd be 50% as well. If they were RR, what color would they be? They would be red. Okay. So we're going to do some examples um, uh, from your worksheet. So you have this worksheet attached on Classroom. I'm going to do the first couple examples with you. So let's take a look at this worksheet. At the top it says, SpongeBob loves growing flowers for his pal Sandy. Her favorite flowers, poofkins, are found in red, blue, and purple. Use the info provided in your knowledge of incomplete dominance to complete each section below. So number one here, it says write the correct genotype. Remember, genotype means the letters, right? So like A, B, C, D. For each color, if R represents a red gene and B represents a blue gene. So in order to have a red flower, what letters am I going to have if R is red and B is blue? I'm going to have two R's. What letters am I going to have if B represents a blue gene? I would need two Bs to get blue. And what letters would I need to have to get purple? I'd need one red and one blue. Now, it doesn't matter if you write RB or if you write BR, they're the same thing. So it doesn't matter which order you write them in, okay? So number two, what would happen if SpongeBob crossed a poofkin with red flowers with a poofkin with blue flowers? So a red and a blue, okay? So here's what we have to do. We need to figure out, well, what is the red flower? So the red flower is going to be big R, big R. So one of them is going to be big R, big R. So I'm going to put that on the side, big R, big R, with one with blue flowers. So blue flowers, that's big B, big B. Okay. Now I'm going to fill in my Punnett square. So I got RB, RB, RB and RB. So notice they're all RB. So how many are big R, big R? Zero. How many are RB? Four. And how many are big B, big B? Zero. So how many would have red flowers? So red is big R, big R. How many are big R, big R? Zero, right? How many have purple flowers? Four of them. Four out of four, which is 100%. And how many have blue? would be zero. I'll do one more with you. Number three, what would happen if SpongeBob crossed two poofkins with purple flowers? Complete the Punnett square to show. So two purple flowers. So what letters are purple flowers? So purple flowers are RB. So we want two RB flowers, right? So we're going to put an R and a B here. And we're going to put an R and a B here. So we're going to fill in our Punnett square, so R, 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 B, R, B, B, B. So how many big R, big R's do we have out of R, four? We have one. How many R, B's do we have? We have two. 
How many big B, big Bs do we have? We have one. So what percentage would be red? Well, red is big R, big R. So we said there's one out of four. So what percentage is that? One out of four. 25%. How many would have purple? So purple is RB. So two out of four or half is what percent? 50%. And what percentage would have blue flowers? One out of four, which is 25%. So you're gonna do the rest of the problems on here. Turn it in when you're done. Um, and if you have any questions, just shoot me an email.